morning. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Leonis. Uh, once a week. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. I am Pastor Miguel, and it's great that you're here this morning. This will be 45 minutes to an hour of worship and praise and meditation, a time to be together, but also a time to be connected with God. It is so important during this time of the pandemic to be close and try to be in the same spirit. And I say try because sometimes it's so difficult to do it. For those who are online, we welcome you too. And we feel so blessed that you are here inside, but also in, uh, on a device. So big welcome to the house of the Lord and let us worship together. Please stand for the call to worship. Give thanks to God. Give thanks to God at all times and for everything. We give thanks when we can and as we can for his struggles, for the years. Give thanks to God at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks that God brings with us in our joys as well as our pain, in our losses as well as our life. All we bear beside us is from God. of all the diverse people you have created. 
Give us wisdom to be peacemakers and mediators of understanding where there is conflict. Give us wisdom when we are in conflict to make it both, both for us and for those with whom we differ, to save face and win and move forward hand in hand. Give us wisdom to discern what is of ultimate value for our souls and to make wise choices. O oh God, give us wisdom. O oh God, give us discernment. O oh God, give us the will to be faithful. O oh God, give us the power to love. Amen. One of the blessings of being together is that we can greet each other with the peace of the Lord. And we have learned during this pandemic season that we cannot shake hands, that we cannot kiss or hug, but we still can wave our hands, bow, put our hands in our hearts as a sign of peace. So I will invite you to look around and offer signs of peace. And I said to you, the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please offer signs of peace to your brothers and sisters.
you raise me up. And this is our call at this time of sharing our joys and our concerns, is to pay attention to our brothers and sisters who need a special prayer. So let me share with you the joys and the concerns. Robin lives a praise that Mike is home and on oxygen after being on a ventilator because of COVID. His children have recovered as well. Bonnie and Gary lift the praise that their grandson Sam is doing well. He's out of quarantine after testing positive to COVID. Carol lifts a frame gene in the hospital in Florida with COVID-19. Prayers for Caroline as she had a procedure this week and now knows she has cancer and will begin chemo treatments. So we have these names and we would like to lift up a prayer for them, but I'm sure that you also have prayers in your hearts, in your inner heart. So let us bow our heads and ask God this is a special prayer. God of all, you are in every single situation and you know our lives so well since we were in the womb of our mothers. So at this time, O oh Lord, we come to you and we ask you, O oh Lord, that you will bring wisdom to us as we pray. And we ask for the names that have been mentioned. Because we know, O oh Lord, that even when you know every single thing, you are pleased when we can open our mouths and our hearts and declare that you are our God. This has been a difficult time for everybody. A time of isolation, a time that we have been in distance with one another, a time that we have to learn new ways of living. So in the midst of this, O oh Lord, we pray for those who are experiencing anxiety in their lives, those who are experiencing stress in their lives, all of those, O oh Lord, who have been affected by this pandemic. So we ask, O oh Lord, that you will be paying attention to our prayers and putting an attentive ear, but also a healing touch in those who need you. We need patience, O oh Lord. We need understanding in these difficult times. So we ask you, O Lord, that you will be with us, giving us the comfort, but also the peace that we need. And more than that, give us, O Lord, the strength that we need as well. So today, O Lord, as we pray, we ask your wisdom and your discernment as we navigate our lives, as we, O Lord, continue in this journey, knowing that it's not just a journey is a journey of faith in which you are leading us, in which you, O oh Lord, I are, you are guiding us. One day, O oh Lord, your disciples were looking at each other and asking, how can we pray to you, O oh Lord? And they ask you, teach us, O oh Lord, how to pray. So Jesus opened his mouth and gave them this beautiful prayer that all of us, we will be repeating at this time by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear these words from Paul's letter to the people of Ephesus. Be careful then how you live, 
not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. It is amazing that we are right now in this no longer strangers. Uh, and Paul continues giving us some ideas of what it means to be a church in the midst of differences. And if you remember, of you are just uh, into this new study of the letter of Paul to the Ephes Ephesian church, I would like to make a little, little resume. Um, if you remember, this church was having a very strong problem between two groups. The Gentiles on one side and the Judeo-Christians. And Paul writes them and he tells them that even when they have differences, they have to be united. He prays for them. He asks them for two things in his prayer. Uh, he also asks them to be together, bound together. He prays for peace. He prays for unity. But today it's interesting what he is asking for. He prays for wisdom, for love. And talking about love, most of, most of us use the word love in our daily language. And it was even interest, interesting for me who, um, as an immigrant and whose mother tongue is Spanish to see how we use in English the word love. And let me tell you something. It is more than one entry when we speak about love. And it is not necessarily connected with the love that we feel for somebody. As an example, if we speak English, we say, I love pizza. I love football. I love this TV program. And when I came here, I was like, how can you love pizza? How can you love a TV show? So in Romans languages, for those who don't know, those are languages that come from Latin. We have French and Spanish and Portuguese. We have Italian. We have Romanian. And in those Romans languages, love is a very strong word. A very strong word. For example, you will never say, in my case, to a girl, I love you on your first date. <laughs> this word would be too much responsibility <laughs> if you say that in your first date. Perhaps you will say, I like you. So do you see the difference? Do you see the difference between in the connotation of the word? Psychologists speak about seven types of love. And when they speak about these seven types of love, they, uh, the definitions are connected with the Greek concept of love. So, for example, we have filial love, which is the love of friends, uh, who shares goodwill. We have the story gay uh, love, which is the familial love, the kind of filial love about the love between parents and their children. We have the agape love that we have heard about in the, in the Christian language, the agape love, which is this universal love, such as the love for strangers, nature, or God, we have the ludus love, which is it's playful or uncommitted love, and it can involve activities such as 
dancing and, and seducing and, and all these that it has to do connected with games and fun. We have the pragma love, which is a kind of practical love that comes the word pragmatic. Um, and we have the philautia love, which is the self-love, which can be healthy or unhealthy. And finally, we have the eros love, which is sexual and passionate love. I'm sure that I can ask you the seven loves and you will repeat it like nothing, right? <laughs> well, let me speak a little bit about the last one. The Eros love. And I'm sure that you, in your relationship with your spouse or that significant other, I can tell you that it's more than pheromone. And remember, those pheromones are chemicals that they are capable of acting like hormones outside the body of the secret, uh, secret, secreting uh, individual, of impacting the behavior of and receiving individuals. So what we have here is that in our relationships, we are more than pheromones. So let me go a little bit deeper on that idea. When you are in a relationship with somebody and if you look somebody's eyes and you are in that relationship, you don't start thinking about what you're experiencing. You don't start saying, I have a brain activation in response to this romantic partner. I am feeling the activation of the hippocampus. The hypothalamus and, interior, and anterior cingulated cortex. In addition, my areas such as the amygdala and frontal cortex are deactivated in response to this romantic love. You don't say that. That sounds very scientific, right? When you have a, a, um, a connection with somebody, is more than that analysis. You don't say anything like there is a concentration of both oxytocin and vasopressin, that they are getting all these connections for me to feel in love with somebody. No, you don't do that. It's completely different. The only way for you to feel this is if you are really, really analyzing scientifically the experience of the person that is in front of you. So you probably, instead of saying that, you said you will feel that your heart is going to be bit, bitten so fast that you will probably have the time to think about that because everything will be feelings. Well... If you are a little bit human-like and you want to give a little bit of meaning to your romance, you probably would say, she is very intelligent, but that's it. Or he is very smart, and that's it. But we don't analyze love. We don't analyze scientifically love when we are in a relationship. We love someone because we love that person. I always remember a commercial on TV many years ago that it was a guy who was in love with somebody and he asked, a friend asked him, why do you love this girl? And he just said, I love her. There were no words. No words to express why he was, what he was feeling in his heart. We live in love. And we don't analyze love. So as Christians, when people see our lives as Christians, they don't analyze our belief system. They don't try to rationalize our mind processes and try to work out what makes us think that the way we do or what we make in our beliefs what we normally do 
is just to see the testimony of the person. Our journey of faith. We try to remember that the person can say whatever, but his actions or her actions are going to be so important. So if we can preach in terms of the gospel, what people will see if that preaching matches our lives. Do you understand what I mean? Move your heads, please. So I can feel that I'm doing a great job. <laughs> Our lives are like candles. We, Jesus said about himself that we are to be lights. Lighting up the world. Lights. And just as we enjoy the light of a candle without scientific analysis... Some people will see our lives to witness if the flame of life is real or not. This is why it is so important to try to live our lives in such a way that we are honoring God with our lives. And honoring our profession of faith. And honoring the name of being called Christians. I had the experience in a little town. I was part of the youth ministry and we were visiting a new neighborhood. And in that neighborhood, the idea was to go door by door inviting people for a special uh, event that we were going to have in that particular church. And one gentleman, and it always was here in my mind, one gentleman see, said, most of Christians right now are all divided. Most of Christians now are always fighting. Most of Christians are not giving a good testimony. And I don't want to be part of that. That broke my heart. Broke my heart because we are an open book. We are an open Bible to the world. Somebody says we are open Bible to the world because in a way if we call ourselves to be Christians, everybody sees who we are. Paul is writing to the letter to the Ephesians and Paul is telling them, be careful how you live. Not as unwise people. But as wise people, be careful. When we say be careful, it means that there's danger there. So be careful. I wonder what you think when we speak about the word wisdom. Maybe you think about Dalai Lama. This spiritual holy man whose silence speaks louder than words. That person that we see him and we know that he's a special guy. Perhaps you think of Mother Teresa, that she embodied the compassion and care for others, who was a beacon of light to the world. Maybe you think about someone who is entirely unknown to the rest of the world, but just his life is so important and so touching in your life that helped you to journey your own life. For many of us, when we think about wisdom, we think of an unshivable quality. Other people are wise. It's certainly not something I could achieve for myself. But wisdom is a quality. In others, to be admired but seemingly beyond my grasp. Is that really true? But in this letter, Paul is disputing that view and sees wisdom as an ordinary way of living the Christian life. And he says, be careful then how you live. 
not as unwise people, but as wise. So we are called, you and I, we are called to live and be called to live a life of wisdom. But what does it mean to live a life in wisdom? I like what it says in the following verses, because life is a gift. And we know that. It's a gift. It, in, in verse in verse 5, 16, it says, making the most of the time. Making the most of the time. And that could be an excellent motto for our lives. But what would be great to remember what happens when we die and we see written on your thumb stone, the following thing. It says your name, the year you were born, a Dutch, and the year that you died. But it's interesting because when we see, for example, the following example, Michael Sands was born in 1969, died in 2020, or something like that. Or maybe he was born in 69, and died in 2021. But the Dutch in the middle is the important thing. Because the Dutch in the middle represents our life. One day your life and my life will be represented in its entire, entirely by a little Dutch on our gravesite. Between two dates. When that day comes, I wonder what your Dutch will represent. Will you have followed Paul's advice in the Bible reading? Will you have made the most of the time? Remember, life is a gift. What are you doing? What are we doing with our life? According to Paul, that Time means to offer our best to God. And Paul says, So do not be afraid, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So brothers and sisters, we are here to be wise with our time. To know that God is giving us this abundant life. How are we living that life? Are we truly representatives of the Lord in this world? Are we truly an open Bible that people can see and recognize? Look at that person. That person lives Christ and has Christ in his life. Or are we ashamed of who we are? It's interesting because... In our question of, so what is next? During this time of the pandemic, we have learned that church goes beyond the walls of our building. And we have been called to be the church in our homes, in our places of work, in our new reality. We have learned to worship God from a distance, from a screen, or some of us, inside in a physical presence because we know we know the importance of being church we know the importance of being together like a charcoal that is together in a campfire we need we know that that is the that unity is the one that allowed us to be warm but besides that to have that fire in our lives. But what happens if you start putting aside your time with God? In the first week, out of the fire. Or maybe in the second week, out of the fire. Perhaps in the third week, out of the fire. You will be so far from the fire that you will start cooling down. And your heart will be different. 
will be different because you will be out of that fire that helps you to recognize that the Holy Spirit is moving in your life. The wise life is lived in the Christian community because entirely only we need each other. Why do you think that it was so important for us to be together? Because that is important in our lives, to be connected. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise. And Jesus said, I have come so that you may have life in all its fullness. And when that fullness touches our lives, our cup overflows. Like Psalm 23, 6 that says, Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May these words that Paul is bringing to the church be in our hearts. We are an open book to the world. What are we doing with that book? as a family of faith, both in this sanctuary and in homes throughout our community. We now take a moment to consider the gifts we offer this week. They are more than an act of gratitude for all that we have received. They are an expression of who we are as a people of God. Our gifts witness to people we will never meet. Our gifts bring hope to those who feel abandoned. Our gifts bring healing to those who are broken. Our gifts bring food and water to those who are hungry and thirsty. As we live, put our faith into action. Our gifts help us to share God's love, compassion, and mercy with all in need. So let us take a few moments and reflect on how blessed we are and how we can be a blessing to others.
and gracious God, source of life and every blessing, we give thanks for love, compassion, and mercy you show us. Accept these offerings we bring to you now. Bless them and those that offer them, that together we can be your witness in this community, extending your love and compassion to all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God has invited us to live in wisdom and to be wise as people of God. So now as we go out of this place, let me ask you something. As I bless you, you bless me. And let us pray. Send us, O Lord, out of this place knowing that we have to be wise Christians Know that we are an open book for the world and we are called to be the light that you want us to be. So now, brothers and sisters, go in the love, in the peace, but also in the wisdom of God. Go in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.